In this video, we're going to introduce normal distributions and we're going to look at how this applies to probability. So the simplest way to think of a normal distribution is when we have continuous data. And I've given an example on the left hand side of the screen here. When we have continuous data, that data will be distributed around a mean value. Now with a normal distribution, we actually end up with a line of symmetry at the mean value. So here we have a graph of room temperatures, and let's assume that a room thermostat is set at 20 degrees. That means that whenever the temperature drops below 20 degrees, the heating will be switched on, and whenever the temperature rises above 20 degrees, the thermostat will be switched off or the heating will be switched off. So what we would expect is we would expect the temperature to fluctuate either side of the mean value of 20 degrees. So here on our diagram, our mean value is 20 degrees. But there will obviously be times when the temperature will drop below 20 degrees, and there will obviously be times when the temperature rises above 20 degrees. Although we're trying to maintain that optimum of 20 degrees, there's going to be fluctuations either side. But what we would expect is that the vast majority of that data would be distributed close to the mean value. So we see here that the majority of our data is distributed around our mean value of 20 degrees. If we deviate just a little bit away from 20 degrees, say 19 and a half degrees and 20 and a half degrees, then that would be represented by this portion of our graph here. And again, we see the vast majority of our data sitting in that range. The further we deviate away from the mean, so down here at temperatures of 18 degrees, we see that there's very little data below 18 degrees, and in fact it would be represented by this region here on our graph. And the same is true for temperatures above 22 degrees, we can see that there's very little data in that range. So what we can begin to do is we can begin to relate that to probability. If our y-axis here is probability, then we can see that there's a greater probability that the temperature is going to be exactly 20 degrees than the probability that it's going to be 18 degrees. And what we can actually do is assign regions to this. So we could say, what is the probability that the temperature will be between 19 and a half and 20 and a half degrees? Or we could say, what is the probability that the temperature will be greater than 22 degrees? So the method that we use to do that is we need to convert our normal distribution to a standard normal distribution. So on the right hand side, we have a representation of a standard normal distribution. So some of the differences you'll notice here is that our mean temperature has gone from being 20 degrees. When we standardize that, we want our mean to be zero. We want our data to be centered around the datum of zero. And on our left hand side, we had a standard deviation of 0.75 degrees. Well, in order for this to be a standard normal distribution, we need our standard deviation to be one. Now the huge advantage of doing this is that we can use standardized normal distribution tables, also known as Z tables, in order to determine probabilities of different temperatures being achieved. And I'm going to show you how to do this in this video. But the first thing that we need to be able to do is to convert any variable to a standardized normal variable. And we'll do a couple of examples here. Let's say that we have a temperature of 21 degrees. Now we want to convert that to a standardized variable. So if we look at our formula in the top center to go from normal distribution to standardized normal distribution, we need to apply this formula. So we're going to convert 21 degrees to a standardized normal variable. We're going to do Z equals X, where X is our temperature, 21, minus the mean, which is 20, that's our mean temperature, divided by the standard deviation of 0.75. And that gives us an answer of 1.3 recurring. So if we look at where 21 degrees sits on our normal distribution, we're over here somewhere. And if we compare that to where our standardized variable sits at 1.33, we can see that their locations are very similar. We've standardized that variable. Let's just look at another example. Let's take something closer to the mean. Let's take 19.6 degrees C. So to standardize that variable, we need to do 
19.6 minus the mean of 20 divided by the standard deviation of 0 0.75. And standardising that variable, we get minus 0 0.53. Now once again, if we refer to our two diagrams, 19.6 degrees sits somewhere here on our normal distribution and minus 0.53 sits somewhere around here on our standardised view. So this is where we can introduce our z-tables, because what we could do is we could start to look at different probabilities. So for example, we could look at the probability that the temperature will be below 21 degrees. And I'm just going to clear some of those shaded regions on the normal distribution, and then we'll look at what that actually means. So we know from previous tutorials that the probability of events happening must all add up to one. And the way that that's represented on our normal distribution graph is that the area under the bell curve must equal one. So the entire area under here must equal one. If we want to know the probability that the temperature is going to be less than 21 degrees, then we're referring to this area here. And we know it's going to be less than 1 because some temperatures are above 21 degrees. Now we also know that that corresponds with a standardised variable of 1.33. So again, if we refer to our standardised normal distribution, that's going to be represented by this area here. And again, we know that that's got to be less than 1. We can see that it's greater than a half, but less than 1. So let's look at our z-tables and see if we can find the probability that the temperature will be less than 21 degrees. So here we have our z-tables, and what we notice down the left-hand side is we have a range of z-values going all the way from minus 3.9, and onto the second page will go all the way up to plus 3.9. Along the top, we have additional decimals. So let's say, for example, our z-value was minus 3.91. Well, we have minus 3.9, 0.01, so minus 3.91 would be represented by this box here, this probability here. And if we take another example, let's say for example our z value was minus 2.76, we would look here for minus 2.7, we would go here for 0 0.06, and where that row and that column converge gives us a probability value. Now the other thing that we're told here is that table values represent area to the left of the standard normal variable. Okay, so if we think about the area we shaded, we shaded left of 21 degrees. We had a standardised normal variable of 1.33. So let's find out the probability or the area to the left of 1.33. And so we scroll down into the positive section. We've got 1.3 here, 0 0.03 here, and where the two converge, we have this probability here, 0 0.90824. So this area here, 0 0.90824, which represents the region that's shaded in red, and that will also represent this region here, 0 0.90824. Therefore, the probability that the temperature will be below 21 degrees is 0 0.90824. So what is the probability then that the temperature is going to be greater than 21 degrees? Well, if we refer to our normal distribution curve, first of all, we can see that that will be represented by this region here and it will be represented by this region on our standardised normal distribution. Now here's the important thing, we don't need to revisit the z-tables because the total area under the bell curve is 1. Therefore the probability that the temperature is going to be greater than 21 degrees is just 1 minus 0 0.90824. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.09. 176.
So let's just remove our working and we'll do one more example. And this time I want to calculate the probability that the temperature is going to be between 19.6 and 21 degrees. So 19.6 and 21 degrees on our normal distribution graph we're referring to a region around here. And on our standardised normal distribution, we're referring to a region between minus 0.53 and 1.33. So this region here. So we're going to first of all go to our Z tables and we're going to find the area to the left of 1.33, which represents the probability less than a Z value of 1.33. And we're also going to find the area to the left of minus 0.53. And then we'll see how those values can be used to determine the area or the probability of the shaded sector on our standardised normal distribution graph. So first of all, as we're already here, we'll take our probability to the left of a z value of 1.33. So we locate 1.3 in the left hand column. We locate 0.03 along the top. And where the two converge gives us the 0 0.90824 that we had previously. Now we need to do the same for minus 0 0.53. So if we scroll up to minus 0 0.53, and although we can't see the top column here, we have minus 0 0.5. This will be minus 0 0.50, minus 0 0.51, minus 0 0.52 minus 0.53. So let's note that value 0 0.29806. Okay, so we need to do this in two sections. First of all, we know that the area to the left of 1.33 on our standardized normal distribution curve, and we'll continue in the same color, this area here is 0 0.90824. But what we need to do is we need to remove the probabilities associated with a z value less than minus 0.53. So that represents this region here. We're going to need to subtract that. Well, we know that that area there from the z tables is 0 0.29806. Therefore, the probability that we have a temperature between 19.6 and 21, and again, I'm going to refer to our normal distribution graph on the left, this region here that's been shaded is going to be the 0 0.90824 minus the 0 0.29806, and that equals 0 0.61018. And that represents the probability that the temperature will be between 19.6 and 21 degrees. The important thing to remember here is that when we use the Z tables, those areas or those probabilities are taken to the left of the given Z value.